In the first video, we created the general framework for the application. Now it's time to extend it by adding camera functionality. That way we can take pictures in the app. Unlike pre-Mango, we can now actually integrate the camera functionality into the app. We have our own button in the application to take the picture, since we no longer need to use the task to send the user out to the camera and then wait for them to return. So we can take it and even show a preview right inside of this window. And what you'll notice here is we don't actually have a specific camera control. What we do is we use a canvas that has a video brush set. And the video brush itself will be set using the camera. So let's go to the code behind. So what we do is we use the photo camera class and we simply set the photo camera as the source for a camera brush. Now I also have a little bit of additional logic here to transform the camera surface so that it's rotated based on the way the camera is. We create a file name based on the current app save counter. Each time we save a picture, we increment this by one. And then we need to deal with the events of the camera. When a picture is taken, three different events occur. A thumbnail is made available, the image is made available, and then the capture is completed. So when the thumbnail is available, we create a new photo memo object. We use that save counter as the file name. We also embed the latitude and longitude. We do this because we're using a geo-coordinate watcher. We add that photo memo, and then we save the actual bits of the photo. We use the event from the content ready event args, and we use the image stream so that we can save the current still photo. And then we simply use the stream classes in order to save to a file in isolated storage. We do the same thing when the full size image is available. By having a thumbnail available, we can show previews in the application without needing to load a five megapixel or bigger image that then needs to be scaled. Now within the view model, I've actually implemented a command so that we can bind the UI to the view model directly to invoke the picture taking. What happens is we first tell the view model about the camera. In the app view model, the camera is set to cam. And then we have a method here called capture photo to make sure that we're not currently capturing. It increments the save counter and it calls capture image. And the part that we actually expose is the delegate command object, capture photo command, which is exposed as a read only property. And this uses a method called delegate command, which is given the address of the capture photo method. Delegate command is a very lightweight object that allows you to expose a command so you don't need to create a specific class for each command. So back in the camera page, if we go to the XAML view, the snapshot button itself, instead of having an event on it, it's simply wired directly to the command capture photo command. And when capture photo command is invoked in the view model, that command behind the scenes invokes the capture photo method. Finally, when we view the details page now, we want to be able to actually view the image. So the source of an image is set to bind to the thumbnail property. But because it's an isolated storage, we create a converter that will retrieve it from isolated storage. And that's the ISO image converter. And what it does is it looks at the path that's passed into it. It opens up the isolated storage retrieves that image and returns it as a bitmap image. And then it will automatically display in the UI. So let's take a look at what that looks like now. And we're running in the emulator. So of course there's no actual camera and we'll see the dummy pictures that are taken through the device camera. So we see this white box with the black image around it. And if we were to view this on an actual device, we would have a live viewfinder here. So we click snapshot and it saves the image and it goes to history and then there's the actual embedded thumbnail image. 
can take several of these. And each one of these now is tagged with its name and with a comment. The comment is simply the date and time that it was taken. So now we can view the details. This includes the latitude and longitude. And we also use the map control so that we can display on the map where it was actually taken. The invalid credentials message will appear until you get Bing Maps credentials and embed them into your application. You can do that for free by going to microsoft.com slash map slash developers and you add the key to your application before you publish it. Now one thing to keep in mind that's less than ideal is that when using a pivot or panorama control with a map, you can't scroll side to side in the control and still slide side to side on the pivot or panorama. So you need to use the top header controls to do that. In the next video, we'll create a database to save the pictures.